for all you've done, amen. Anybody that's here on today that's just grateful and thankful that God just keeps on blessing you over and over and over again. Amen. It's so good to see you here on today. I just believe you came because you came looking for a word. You could have made an excuse and said, well, there's going to be traffic issues, but something in your spirit said, I've got to get to God's house on today. Amen. 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 And I want you to know you ain't going to come short on the word for today. I want to ask if you'll travel with us to the gospel according to St. Luke chapter 7. The gospel according to St. Luke chapter 7. We want to commence reading there at verse number 11. There's a word for God's people on the day. I believe there are people that are standing in the gap today. That you're going to intercede on behalf of somebody else today. Because God wants to do some things on this day. Amen. 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 I'm glad that God didn't say, well, I'm going to be short because it's a holiday weekend. But the God that we serve, he's in control. And he's still yet working miracles in our lives. The gospel according to St. Luke chapter number 7, beginning there at verse number 11. We thank God for all our guests that are visiting with us on today as well. Amen. If you're saying, Pastor, where's your pulpit? Don't worry about it. Just pretend like I'm coming to your house. We're just going to dialogue for a few moments. Amen. It's going to be personal up close and I get out of your way. The gospel according to St. Luke chapter number 7. Beginning there in verse number 11, it is there that we find these words recorded. Soon afterward, Jesus went to a town called Nain, and his disciples and a large crowd went along with him. As he approached the town gate, a dead person was being carried out, the only son of his mother, and she was a widow. And a large crowd from the town was with her. And when the Lord saw her, his heart went out to her, and he said, don't cry. Then he went up and touched the bier that they were carrying him on, and the bearer stood still. He said, young man, I say to you, get up. The dead man sat up and began to talk, and Jesus gave him back to his mother. And for a few moments on today, I want to use the subject of thing, Lord, give us our family back. Lord, give us our family back. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Lord, give us our family back. We're continuing a series that we've entitled Family Matters. I, I've come today because uh, I need to just hang out with you all for just a few moments and we're going to wrestle together for uh, a few issues and then we're going to intercede on behalf of all of our families. So you can't have a better community unless you have a better family. Hello, somebody. I think I just said something. I said, we can't have a better community if we don't have better families. Yeah, amen, amen. I need you to grab that. It is so ironic that in a day and age where we're so technically advanced, you know, we've got smartphones, we've got social media, you know, you can communicate almost instantaneously across the whole world, but yet we have decayed spiritually. We've decayed morally. We're living in a day and age, yes, where we can connect with people, but yet at the same time, it's a day and age where somebody might not value your life and kill you. Can I get a witness again? Somebody may look and say, I just don't value who you are, what's going on with you, and, and take your life. But at the same time, they may be texting somebody. Talk to me, somebody. It's a different kind of day and age that we live. So many strange things are happening within our society when you look around and visit our neighborhoods, visit our own families now. Hello, it don't have to be a stranger that's going to take your life. It could be somebody that's your cousin. Can I get a witness in here? Hey, we're living in a day and age where things have shifted so drastically. Yes, we can get on the internet. We can communicate with almost anybody, anywhere, anytime. But at the same time, it seems like we don't like folk. Have mercy, somebody. Yeah, it seems like our families are becoming more fractured. That they're more disconnected now than they've ever been. Isn't it strange how we seem to have gotten more, but we love each other less? Can I get a witness in here? 
<laughs> we, we are we're riding around and got nice cars, wearing nice clothes, got nice televisions. Talk to me, somebody. But we don't love one another. It's almost though we have forgotten that I am my brother's keeper. Hello, somebody. It's though we have this spirit that Cain had, this temperament that says, if it ain't about me, I ain't stood nobody else. I know it ain't none of you, but I'm just talking about society as a whole. There are people like that. And so God has sent me by to visit this text on today because there's some things in here we need to learn. I believe that the Lord wants to help somebody. The city of Nain, the Bible, my theme passage, chapter 7, verse 11 there. We're going there to the city of Nain. It's a small city about 25 miles southwest of Capernaum. Southwest of Capernaum is on the border between Galilee and Galilee and Samaria, on the border between Galilee and Samaria. It's where it's located. It's a very beautiful city. It's respected there in the land of Galilee. The only thing about it that's kind of different is that it's also a burying place, a burying place there and the city of Nain. So I want to walk into my theme passage, chapter 7, verse 11 there. And this is what the Bible says. Soon afterwards, soon after what Jesus has just been hanging out with a centurion soldier who, who came to him and had enough faith to say, Jesus, I believe you can heal my master and you don't even need to come to my house. You, I got enough faith in you, Jesus. If you just speak a word over my house, some stuff will change. I think I just said something. I wonder if I have any believers in here that's got enough faith in Jesus. That you can speak, you can say, Lord, bless my house, my address. Even though I'm at 3705 right now, will you bless my house and believe that God can bless your house? Well, Jesus has just dealt with him so soon afterward. Now Jesus is on the move. And he, he's left Capernaum and he's journeying these 25 miles. He gets to the city of Nain. Now, I want you to make note, there's a crowd with him and his disciples, and a large crowd went along with him. Now, Jesus is on a divine appointment. Somebody say divine appointment. Divine appointment. Jesus just doesn't show up places accidentally. He shows up divine appointment. He, he operates on his schedule, and he knows, I need to show up at this place, the city of Nain, for a reason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he, he can show up. He has a divine appointment that's coming and later on in the text. And any time earlier would have been too early. Any time later would have been too late. And so Jesus says, I'm on my way. And notice he has a crowd because we got a contrast. There's going to be another crowd that's going to show up in the text. This crowd here is following Jesus because of all the miracles that he's done. Next verse, verse number 12, as he approached the town gate, a dead person was being carried out. The only son of his mother, the only son, and she was a widow, and a large crowd from the town was with her. I want you to see, there's one crowd going into town, there's another crowd coming out of town. These are two different crowds, they got two different attitudes, one is all excited, they're following Jesus, and they're just flowing with him, the other crowd has somebody that has recently died and so they're much more in mourning coming out of the city of Maine. Now I want to pause here and hang out for just a moment because everything the Lord tells us in the text is important. I want us to grab this. The Bible said it was the only son the only son of this widow woman. That's significant. Why? Because at this particular time in history, women didn't have jobs. So the best means of income was to have a man in your life. Are y'all following that? And so because she's a widow, what's that tell us? Her husband has died. So her, her best source of income, Deacon Whitley, is her son. And so now with the son, Deacon uh, Brother Woodson being dead, now she's really in bad straits because here I am, a woman and my only son, the, the best pro the provider for me for the future is this son and he's now dead because women did not have jobs at this particular time in history. They, they, they lived with their parents, got married. After they got married, they stayed home, they raised the children. They didn't have jobs. There's only one job, one job that women did back in this day. And that was when a woman was a harlot. Did y'all hear me? She would be a harlot. Y'all do know what a harlot is? Right? Hello, somebody. They don't know? She was a harlot. 
Now a hoe got paid. Now I want you to stay with me now, stay with me. Even for the hoe, she needed a son. What you mean? Because even, because her future still depended on a son. Are y'all catching me? Yeah, Whitley, do you know why the, 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 the woman, as a, even as a heart of the prostitute, needed a son? Because when she got old, she needed a son. Y'all still looking at me, son. Amen. Because if she's going to make it financially, she needed a son. Because her, her, as she got older, her income was going to decline. Now look at that, Miss Frank. I'm trying to break it down for you. She's not going to make the same amount of money the older she got. Turn to your, y'all still looking at me great. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, who wants an old hoe? Well, they can have a young hoe. Come on and talk to me, somebody. Don't play with me this morning. I keep it raw, real, and relevant. Y'all look at me like y'all kind of didn't understand. Now you understand, don't you? This is a bad situation. You ain't got no husband and your only son. Is dead. That's a problem. When you were a woman at this particular time in history. Because they wouldn't like they gonna go get no job. Hello, somebody. Mm. I'm trying to help us. That's why the Lord took time to help us understand. He wants us to grasp the magnitude of this situation. This woman has lost her only son. The one that really is key to her future and how she's going to make it. And now he's dead. And there's a crowd of folk yes, sir. that are with her. Wow. And she's lost so much. Now, I want to raise the question today. I just want to, because y'all here and we're dealing with family matters. I, I wonder, how many sons have, have we buried that could have helped their mother as they got old? Mm, did you hear me? Because we're living in a day and age where somebody will just take somebody's life and without regard for it and mess up a whole bunch of stuff. And so how many, how many sons, Brother Joe, have we lost that could have helped their mothers? Mm. That, that, that's what bothers me. Because I want to suggest to us that, 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 that perhaps we buried some Martin Luther King Jr. Perhaps we buried some doctors. Perhaps we buried some engineers. But perhaps, perhaps we, we buried some people who would have shifted a whole situation. We buried them, John, because their life was cut short. Hello, somebody. Because we, we, did, we didn't cover the person maybe the way we should have. <laughs> Hello, somebody. I, I can't blame all of this on somebody else because I want to suggest to us the reason that our family situation the way they are, somebody didn't pray enough. Somebody didn't cover somebody enough, up enough in prayer. Somebody didn't say, now, Lord, keep them from hurting their own sake. Some of this stuff we are responsible for. Because while we've been riding in nice cars, dressing in nice clothes, watching nice television, hello somebody, we've not been busy enough concerned about our families the way we ought to be. Somebody say, Lord, give us our families back. And until we come to grips with the reality that perhaps we are, we've got a piece in this as well. 
that we just can't blame the government. We just can't blame somebody else. Maybe we got to turn the spotlight on ourselves and say, now how have I contributed to this? Hello, somebody. Because this is a, this is a bad situation. Can we just be real? Now, I don't know about you, but I feel for the African-American system. I do. Because oftentimes when you look and you say, well, some of y'all's husband is in prison. Some of them ain't in prison. They kind of out, but they ain't out. You know what I'm talking about. I ain't going to get any business. It's the holiday. And you got that group that they don't know what they are. So when the African American woman said there's just a few good men, they telling the truth. Amen. Amen. Cause there's just a few, just a few good men that's run a handful, walking around because they look and say, "Good God." Because we off the charts. We, 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 we miss where God wants us to be. Pastor, where we're supposed to be at. We ought to be in sync with Jesus so that we can hold our families together. The Bible says, yeah, look at me straight. Verse number 13, then press on. Look at me straight. When the Lord saw her, his heart went out to her and he said, don't cry. Now, we've been crying a long time, but I got news for you. If we're going to change some stuff, we got to do more than just cry. Amen. amen, amen. I want to suggest to us in our text that, 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 that the key is Jesus here, what he displayed. Because the Bible said he saw her and his heart went out to her. In other words, he connected with her. He connected with the pain that was inside. He, he connected with what she was going through. As she was suffering, he was suffering as well. There was a compassion that was in his heart that flowed to this woman. And I got news for you. If you're going to help your family come back together, you've got to have a compassion like Jesus. You just can't talk about it. You've got to be about it. And so you've got to say, i got a compassion like Jesus I gotta have that type of compassion to say, I'm gonna love somebody through that situation. Why y'all looking at me, Charles? I'm gonna, I'm gonna love them through the heartache, the heartbreak they're going through at this particular time. Because I wanna suggest as many of us have become selfish. And so now we're so caught up on self that we can't even love our own family. Hello, somebody. And yeah, there's a reason why Cain killed Abel. And when, see, when you don't have a love in your heart, a compassion in your heart, you can't even build a bridge with your own family. Hello, somebody. Your own flesh and blood, you trip. Because if it ain't about you and you don't get the new game, you don't get the new wing, you don't get the new something, you mad. You got to let everybody know you mad. Talk to me, somebody. But what we need is a compassion because you cannot change a family. You cannot change a community without having a love for that family, for that community. Now, I began, I've been looking at this thing. I've been thinking it over, Sister Monisha. I've been thinking, what's up with this? How the heck did we get here? What, what, why is this happening? Why, why do we have so much drama? Why do we just devalue life? Why are we taking people's lives without any regard? And I want to suggest it's because we don't have a compassion. We don't have a love for our own family, for our own community. As a result, if you get mad, you like to shoot somebody in the parking, on the parking lot here at church. Don't make no difference. They make me mad, Pastor. Are you serious? Because we don't have a compassion. Now, the crazy part to me is that we that are, you know, we go to church and we feel with the Holy Ghost and we got all that going on. But I will suggest to you that I think many of us have the disciples type of spirit prior to the Holy Ghost coming. Because I want to say to us that the disciples, even though they were with Jesus, didn't have his compassionate spirit. That's why they often miss stuff. When, 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 when they, that's the reason there are certain things they could not do because they didn't have a compassionate spirit. They, 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 even though they were with Jesus, I need you to follow me. 
I'm helping somebody out. That's why you don't get messed up behind church folk, because church folk can be like the disciples. They with Jesus, but they ain't got it yet. And the reason I want to argue this, I want you to think, those of you that have been in the Gospels, think about it all the times that, that the disciples got it wrong. And they showed all this non-compassion. Just the other Sunday, we were, we were Jesus going to feed the 5,000. The disciples were going, no, nah, no, nah, we don't need to feed him. We ain't got no money for that. Send them jokers away. Remember that, y'all? Send them away. They, they'd rather send the person away hungry rather than feed them. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, sound like some church folk I know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Send them away. I said, send them away. Amen. We, we don't care that they hungry. Just send them away. We ain't got money for that. Are y'all with me in here? I feel something coming. Yeah, yeah. Y'all remember the woman that, that Jesus met at the well? And Jesus took time to talk to her. The disciples said, why, why are you talking to her? You don't need to be talking to that. Turn to the other neighbor and say, neighbor, I know some church folk like that too. Why? that person. I don't want you. You don't need to be talking to them. My Lord. My Lord. My Lord. The disciples were with Jesus, but they such a trip sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they, they be like, gee, why? When, they, when Jesus went to see Zacchaeus, they said, why are you talking to him? Don't you know he's a public and he, you know, he stored some money from folks. Why, Jesus, you being bothered talking to him? Come on now. Mm. Just uncompassionate. You ought to follow the disciples for real. I feel like some of that spirit that crept up on church folk in 2013. Now, keep in mind, it's prior to the Holy Spirit. Now. Them jokers was a trip. They be like, gee, why are you talking to her? Why are you telling her? Why are you going to that place? Matter of fact, them jokers even had the nerve to say, Jesus, get rid of them kids. Y'all remember that? Yeah. Don't be letting them kids come. Send them kids away. And Jesus had to tell them, suffer little children to come unto me. Because you know, some folk in church don't like young people. Turn to your name and say, neighbor. I know some church folk like that. They don't like young people. Pastor, why we got to do that for the young people? Didn't nobody do nothing for me. That's why you pray. Oh, my God. The disciples, when you study them, will have you at times scratch your head and say, where are they getting? And I'm open up. Keep in mind, the whole time they running with Jesus. And you almost like, now how the heck y'all gonna be with Jesus and miss all this? How can you be, how can you be walking with Jesus, seeing all this stuff, and never pick up on his spirit? Y'all don't hear me here. Never get connected to his compassion, his real love for other people. That is what's gonna bring the family together. You can't get it there, cussing the mind. See, some of them want to see your love before they hear about your love. That one, like, I love you, and you know you don't mean it. And they know you don't mean it. They want to see it. They want to see that you have a compassion like Jesus had. If you say and you, you so feel with the Holy Ghost, demonstrate it. Oh, my God. It's getting tight in here. But I think I'm on to something. See, that Je Jesus, Jesus, Jesus said, hey, Mother Stephen. He could say that because Hogue, he connected to the woman and what she was going through. And because he connected to that, oh my God, he's getting ready to shift some stuff. See, 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 because see, if you can connect with love in your heart, God will empower you to do some stuff that you couldn't do in the natural. It'll take place in the supernatural, in the spiritual realm, because now you're not doing it 
for Shobo. You're doing it because you've got a compassion and love that's in your heart for somebody else. Yeah, I came out to tell somebody when you connected to Jesus and you got his compassion in your heart, don't be crying about it. Because I got news for you. God is able to turn your situation around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel my help in here. Take me to verse 14 now. And I'm getting ready to get out of here. The Bible says, Then he went up and touched the bear that they were carrying him on. And the bearer stood still. He said, Young man, I say to you, get up. Verse 15. Verse 15. The dead man sat up and began to talk. And Jesus gave him back to his mouth. Jesus went up there and, and just spoke a word and stopped the whole procession on. Yeah, yeah, casket, uh, the, the, the casket bearing people said, hold it now, Jesus is in charge. Something about him showing up shifted the whole atmosphere. The fly, the fly girl stopped and they, everybody just listened and Jesus told the man that was laying on the coffin, he told him to get up. I need you to grab this. And yeah, while the man was dead, he was on the coffin, but he wasn't buried. Did you catch that? I said he was laying on the coffin, in the coffin, but he was not buried. I've come by to let somebody know this morning, you've got some people in your life that are living dead. But you better gain some hope because they're not they're not there yet. yet. I think y'all missed it up there. I said, now, you might have somebody around you in your family. They are the living dead. But don't you lose hope up in here on May the 26th. You better remember that they're not buried. I'm getting ready to have a meeting on this coming Saturday at 10 o'clock with some men. And the men are going to be reaching out to some folk that are the living dead. But I got enough faith because I know Alexander. Those men we're going to reach are not buried. What you saying, preacher? Well, let me give it to you this way. Some of you got a cousin that's strung out on drugs, but you better begin to call on the Lord and get some hope back in your spirit because they're not buried. I just believe that God is able. I'm talking about the uncle that's been drinking for over 30 years. He's still not buried. That son that won't that's hard-headed and going the wrong direction before you throw in the towel. Remember that he's not, he's not buried. Do y'all hear me in here? That husband that keeps on smoking, remember he's not buried. That wife that's got anger issues, she's not buried. That daughter that's walking around that's been called HIV that not buried that teenager that's having sex at the age of 14 that not buried the Lord sent me by to let somebody know he's got a divine appointment he's coming by your address and he gonna change that situation but when he gets there he told me to tell you to stop your crying because your situation sister Michelle is about to change because God is an on time God I heard Dottie people say he's an on time God yes he is is there anybody up in here today a witness and warn you and a testifying saying that he is an all time God that the Lord will he'll show up and show out I need a power of 25 folk in here who can be real enough to admit on this Memorial Day Sunday you ain't always been what you should have been but thank the Lord you 
Come on, that